Welcome back, everybody. This is Friday. I'm happy to wrap up the week with something that has been pretty much engulfing me and my entire family for quite a long time. Uh, my son literally came to me. Uh, I have an 11 year old and he finally said, Dad, I, I can't do this anymore to myself because I can't fall asleep. I'm worried about what's happening to Miguel or what's happening to you know, Robbie or everybody else. I said, OK, dude, just slow down because he didn't listen to me. So he basically blew through season one, season two, and season, you know, halfway through season three in like a day and a half. Uh, I said, this is replacing your reality. It's not a healthy thing for you. So uh, please welcome uh, some of the guest members of the Cobra Kai family. Let's introduce you. So again, from my uh, kind of left to right on my side and in no particular order. So uh, Kara and Marie, who plays Sue on Cobra Kai, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Pleasure. Uh, Kwajalein Brown, who plays, uh, I'm going to get this right, Sheila. Yes, Sheila is yes. the name of the character on Cobra Kai. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, Aaron uh, Bradley Danger. So uh, welcome to you. Uh, you know, I, my son, actually, uh, uh, the 11 year old that I keep referencing, his name is Alan. So he said, you need to have the counselor on your show. You need to grab. And I said, well, guess who, who's coming on today? So please welcome. Counselor Blatt, Aaron Bradley Day. Thank you. My pleasure. And uh, last but not least, we have Vaz Sanchez, who basically kicked off the show. Uh, you know, the, the show in a way starts uh, with uh, with Vaz. And he plays Nestor, of course. You've seen him. My son also really, really wanted to have you on the show. So I'm happy that he's getting his wish and he's going to get a chance to watch it. Uh, I actually told him to walk into the room and be here uh, for it, but he has school. So some of some of them have to work. <laughs> <laughs> Priorities, very smart. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we try anyway. And I'm doing this on my lunch break. So basically I have my work and then this is my lunch break where I work. So uh, I know how, you, you all know how this is. We're going to be talking about it because it's, you know, not just going to be about Cobra Kai. It's going to be about what it is like to be a working actor, which all of you are doing. And... One of, one of the uh, folks that was on my show kind of mentioned that, that this is kind of the, the inside the actor studio for the working actor. And I love that. I really actually love that because I am, you know, I, I'm a working actor uh, whenever I have time or opportunity in, in my secondary market of Chicago. You know, Kara, we're going to talk about that, Kara. Um, and, and all of you are as well. And you've, you've uh, done a lot of really, really fun stuff. So let's kick off with Cobra Kai. I know, you know, uh, since, since I mentioned that Vaz was, uh, was kind of the, the beginning of the show, you were in the pilot. Uh, what was that like of seeing kind of Johnny Lawrence walk in and then, you know, joking about the size of his uh, penis? Yeah, um, you know, it was, it was really kind of like uh, uh, polarizing because I, these characters are, you know, it, part of my past, I, I used to love The Karate Kid. Yeah. I uh, watched it all the time. Um, you know, watching Billy in, in just one of the guy, one of the girls, one of the guys uh, back in the day. Uh, mm -hmm. It was another great movie where he just, he's such a quintessential bully. And so to see this, this amazing professional actor walk on set, um, and he is one of the kindest human beings I've ever met. Just a sweet, sweet human being. Um, and they, I feel like they always are. All the, all the bully characters in the movies are always the, the nicest people. Um, and he was he was phenomenal to work with, and that whole sequence uh, was absolutely hilarious. Um, I, I feel like take one was just one for laughs. Like we all just did the did the scene, and then afterwards we were all just cracking up because of how seriously ridiculous it was. But he, he came with so much wonderful intensity in the very beginning uh, mm -hmm. when he's staring down that piece of pizza. Um, it's ve he's very just like he chose a piece, and he's like, I'm gonna stare at that one for like 60 seconds hard, and I was like, okay. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, obviously, a lot of fun. And we just we we probably did 13 or 14 different takes just playing with that sequence alone, just for how much fun it was, you know, so it was really great. Really, really great. That's awesome. Do you know which take actually made it? And by the way, if uh, if you can increase your volume a little bit, that would be great. Sure. Uh, is that any better? Uh, it's a little better. Yeah. Okay. I'll probably put a headset in here in a moment for you. Um, that that may help because the external mic on this is a little sad, but um, 
the uh, I'm not sure which take made it. It probably was closer to the last like three takes um, because the first few were very like we were just so tickled. So yeah. getting through it and finding the rhythm was really kind of, you know, but the last few takes, one of those three probably made it in to, to the final cut. That's very cool. And again, uh, you guys have been on so many sets. Uh, it's great, you know, usually not when you have a co-star appearance, but it's, it's great when you get a chance to actually have some takes because a lot of times it's you come in, you're done and you're like, oh, but I, I, I. no, that's it. We're, we're moving on. And it, it feels very sad, at least to me. Have you found the same thing with you that you want to have, you know, at least, you know, three to five takes? Anybody my experience, uh, my experience with this was that, you know, uh, Josh and Hayden, and I mean, all these guys were, they're so open to the idea of allowing the organic sort of comedy to come into the scene and allowing different interactions, improvisations, uh, pacing, everything. They're very, very open to the creative process. Um, it did never, it never, for me, it never felt rushed. It never felt pressured. It was always just kind of like, this is what we're going to shoot today. And guys just play with it, go with it see what you can come from, what, what, what comes from the scene, what happens. And it always felt that way for me, for, for the, my experience with them was wonderful. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think there's a, a great sense of play of just it being a playground. And we've, we're all here to, uh, you know, work together to bring, you know, bring this story forward that we've all really fallen in love with. And that makes a huge difference when everybody is just there to to play together and it feels good <laughs> and I, I i'm sure that you can see that when you're watching it for everybody that that uh, appears and um comes to the playground <laughs> yeah absolutely and uh i i've had a chance to speak to four or five uh, of, of the cast members so far you know prior to this interview and i, I kind of hear the same thing is that it just it was very welcoming it was very easygoing uh, and everybody just got really comfortable right away. Uh, I, I had the, the last person who I talked to, uh, you know, uh, Rose, uh, who plays uh, Yaya on the show. And I said, you know, there is a beautiful chemistry between the, the, the three of you. How long did that take? She said, basically right away. You know, it just, it just kind of happened. And I hear that from everybody. It's very, very nice. It's rare to find a show where it's like that. I think that starts from the top yeah. Up or, or down. <laughs> you know, um, I remember our appearing in season one was a little ways ago, but um, our first day on set was the board meeting that we have. Yeah. Um, and then when we broke for lunch, um, John and Hayden sat with all of us with the board members. I and mean, it was our very first day. So we were completely you know, new, new people on set, but for them to sit and have lunch with us and just talk about what we're up to and um, wh what our thoughts were about the, about what they were creating. And at that point it was new. We hadn't seen season one. So we didn't really know what it was all going to turn out to be. Um, we were just excited to you know, I mean, once we started shooting and we had a pretty good idea of just how badass the whole thing was, was going to be. Um, but, and then they've just, you know, continued to, to go on that trajectory. But uh, just the fact that they, they sat with us and took the time to want to get to know us as actors, as people, gives you such a, you know, a, a sense of community that I, I personally think is pretty rare uh, and makes a big, a big difference. Yeah, and so you start your first day, and you know, uh, Kara, you start your first day, and there is, you know, Johnny Lawrence in a suit, uh, and you know, for just kind of, uh, I, I did that a little bit with my son because I made him watch Karate Kid Part One before watching Cobra Kai because I wanted him to have a little bit of kind of that background of like, oh wow, okay. So what was it like for you? Because I can't imagine, you know, being uh, growing up and being a huge fan of Karate Kid, I can't imagine what that would be like of being on set and. Hello. <laughs> it's quite surreal. I mean, yeah. I think um, I was a little, you know, both Ralph and and Billy. Yeah. Um, 
but I'm still doing that. Like I just finished season three. Yeah. And when he, when Johnny and Allie are at lunch, I mean, my face was hurting because yeah. I just, I didn't actually even know how much I wanted that lunch to happen yeah. <laughs> or, or to see them together again. Like it's, uh, it's just doing an extraordinary thing that it's hard not to go on this roller coaster where you're, you know, in love with this scene and then you're really, you know, now you're going through Crease's story and you're really uh, clenched. Um, but ultimately, Ralph and Billy are both like just lovely, lovely humans. Yeah. Um, and everybody, you know, is is there to create a story, and it really does feel like we've you've known them for a while. When you when you first meet them, they just have kind of a a kindness and a charm that makes it so welcoming and comfortable. Um, and Billy was really fun. He lost his voice or something was going on um, when he came into the board meeting, so he really had sort of this gravelly thing going on um but he was really uh very playful and kind of improvised some different stuff that was very fun and um it was just a, a great time I always I've recently you know been thinking a lot about how when we're actually on set you can't even really call it work you know the auditioning for all this stuff <laughs> the auditions for the work for the actor when you actually get there, yeah, it's just this Christmas present, you know. It's just this great gift um, that I you you have to pinch yourself sometimes to even think like, is this real right now? It's it's pretty surreal and very Amazing. fortunate. And uh, Kwajalein, you know, moving on, right? So we went from uh, we went from Johnny to both uh, uh, Johnny and uh, and uh, Daniel, and then you were at uh, you know Larusso Auto. Which yes. again, it just it's it's such a great thing of you know us waiting so many years to figure out what's going to happen, and there you go, and now you're <laughs> a part of that world. Uh, what was that like for you? Um, it was like everyone else said, it was pretty amazing. Um, and I would also like to say, even from the first day on set, even before that, the audition process was even very relaxed and very comfortable, and they made you. Um, feel comfortable to just be goofy and to play and to do whatever it is that you wanted to do. <laughs> um, uh, so being on set that first day and, and, and first meeting Ralph and, and, um, and Billy, it was just, it was surreal. Uh, it was amazing to be um, with these two guys that I had watched my entire life. Um, it was a dream come true. It really, really was. And they were both very, very lovely people, wonderful people, very um, encouraging. Um, allowed me to uh, flesh out the character as much as I wanted to. Um, and we just kind of rolled and rocked together. And so it was great. That's wonderful. And then uh, something silly, but I, I would love to know if that actually happened. Did you get to keep any of the bonsai trees? Uh, any, anything you got to take no. away? I should have asked. But <laughs> no. That would have been a nice, nice thing. You know, I'm sure they had plenty uh, kind of laying around. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, Maybe. And then... Yeah, Aaron, um, you know, you have so many juicy parts, uh, <laughs> you know, throughout throughout the show. Everybody is really, really uh, enjoying your character. Did you know when when you were starting out kind of what the plan was for the character? Or, I mean, it really kind of changes as it goes through the season. So was it a kind of a co-star? Did you know you were going to be recurring? What did you know up front? Uh, it was a co-star and it said on the initial breakdown, possibly recurring. So there was that hint that yeah. there could be more than one episode. But of course, my second episode in season one was one line in the cafeteria when I pull um, Sholo off the table. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, I was just so happy to be there. Um, and I wasn't sure, you know, uh, there was, there weren't any of the school faculty, any of the of that set of characters in season two, since it was summer. So yeah. I really had no idea if it would be recurring beyond that point. Yeah. Um, so when I got the call for season three, I was really excited. And I think, um, you know, it's like with all of our characters, they support the story. As Kara said, they move it forward. So we're there 
to serve that purpose. But mm -hmm. I love how they've written everyone with such a backstory. They've taken such time to craft everyone's story mm -hmm. that really you, anyone could pop in and stick around or come in and out at any time. And it, it makes it really exciting. And you bring up an excellent point, which was one of my questions of how much of that backstory did they give you or you had to come up with it on your own? Um, none until on the day. They gave me a little tiny bit. And then it was like Kara saying at lunch, it was more of a, you know, not when we were about to film, yeah. um, that some more of the information came out. We were just kind of standing around. And I think it was John Hurwitz who told me about the backstory of being um, Julie Field's character's little sister, one of Allie's friends from Karate Kid. So that's what they were envisioning, which means I would have been at the all Valley karate tournament with my family, probably. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that was just really fun to have that. But going in and for example, doing the audition, I didn't have any of that information. So you mm -hmm. do have to, as Kwajalein said, you have to really craft that mm -hmm. yourself. And um, I think I identified with Counselor Blatt right away. I, <laughs> I am not her, but I understand where she's coming from. I have two kids, so. I can't imagine trying to keep a whole school full of kids in line, especially when they're all into karate. <laughs> but um, so funny, season three, I had said Counselor Blatt is running this entire school right now. <laughs> I don't know what happened there, you know? Uh, Principal Lopez is, is quite capable. So I guess we're just like, we have to be a team. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I love working with Jose, Miguel Vasquez and I'm really hoping that there will be more of a storyline for that. Um, you know, Dustin Lewis, who played Mr. Palmer in season one and then came back, he was the teacher in season two that was like, you know, this is above my pay grade. They're just, again, so many great opportunities for them to bring people in and out. And it makes it really fun to see where it goes. Yeah, it certainly does. And then from a location perspective, I think uh, Vas, you're, are you New York based? Uh, I know. Um, that's what I saw in your IMDb Pro, and everybody else kind of is is more local to uh, to Atlanta. Uh, although I think, uh, Kara, you're in you're in both markets. You're in my home uh, home city of Chicago, or at least you're repped uh, there. Well, so I'm, I'm currently sitting outside of Detroit. Uh, that is where we're from, um, but we kind of bounce around. So I I was quarantined on the West Coast when this whole <laughs> pandemic started. Um, but I do hop into Chicago quite a bit. And actually when I auditioned for Cobra Kai, I was in New York City. So I sent in a tape. So there was very little feedback yeah. from me or, or you know, from them when I, when I sent that in. But yeah, I'm, I'm anywhere you need me to be. <laughs> I, I, we, we all know how that is. I'm sorry, so yeah, Bob, so wait, are you New York based or uh, you're- No, no, I'm an, I'm an Atlanta actor. Um, I'll have to double check my IMDb and make sure that that's not a confusing point on there, but yeah. I'm Atlanta based, I've been Atlanta based uh, for a while, but I kind of, just like Kara said, it's kind of wherever you need me to be. Um, I travel a lot, so, I mean, not so much this year, obviously, but uh, in the past, I was, I could be anywhere and sending in tapes from anywhere, but my my local status higher market is Atlanta. Got it, and um, again, so in, in the last conversation, reference that uh, because I found that interesting, or so the Susan uh, who plays uh, Homeless Lynn, um, she self-submitted through Actors Access, which I do a lot. So it wasn't even through her agent that she uh, she eventually got the audition. What about for the rest of you? Was it uh, through your agents or did anybody self-submit? I self-submitted. I didn't have an agent yet at the time. So yeah, I, I was on location in Tennessee shooting one of those um, crime reenactment shows that are so popular. And um, yep. it was my first TV gig. And I was trying to figure out how am I going to tape this? Because I was so new. I didn't have a travel kit like I have now with lights and tripods and something decent nope. to tape. Nope. And so thankfully, one of my cast member friends was like, well, I'll try to find a blank wall in the hotel with you and I'll tape it. So he was holding my iPhone as steadily as he could, but it was still kind of... You know? yeah. And uh, the lighting was terrible. We're up against like the one solid-ish wall in the whole place and had a spotlight that kept casting a shadow on my, it was terrible. The quality was so bad, but I felt like the performance was there and I didn't want to miss the opportunity. Yeah. But um, I take a lot of classes at Drama Inc. here in Atlanta. And so uh, the four owners are really my mentors. And I 
sent my tape to one of them, Jason McDonald, and I said, should I send this in? I know you've harped on this so many times that, you know, you don't want to make a bad first impression with a casting director if they think you don't know quality. And I didn't hear back from this was late in the evening. I didn't hear back from him right away. I had to go to sleep for an early call time. I was like, I'm just going to send it. And there was a place for me to put a note. So I yeah. said, sorry for the production quality. I'm on location, you know, <laughs> but I said, I'll, I'll be back in Atlanta on Saturday. If you want me to retape, just please excuse the, the bad tape. Yeah. And luckily Bajo, who was the casting director at the time, I know he was so understanding and, you know, he, he, he got it and he passed it along. And the next morning, Jason wrote me back and was like, you might not want to send that. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's too late. <laughs> but now he laughs at it. He's like, I'm so glad you did, obviously. But, um, you know, so yes, we should always strive for the best possible quality, but casting directors do understand they're looking at the performance. And, and, and as long as you're not doing it every time, I think there are opportunities like that. But I, going back to the, um, actors access bit Bajo is really great he's one of the casting directors that very frequently puts things out to the public on um, actors access and I love that he gives those of us that opportunity that as I said I didn't have an agent then I do now and I'm very grateful for that but there are a lot of talented people that just haven't found that home yet and this gives us the opportunity to submit for some really cool projects well and I was going to say the the you bring up Bajo um, the casting directors in the Atlanta market, I booked through my agent in Atlanta for Cobra Kai. Um, but the, there's, a, there's just an extraordinary community of casting directors in that market that, like you were saying, Erin, they love actors. Yeah. And they really are, I've felt that since I've been down there. Uh, they just have, you know, your they get to know you and want to help launch you into the things that, that are right for you and are really there to, to support the actors in that community. And I feel really fortunate to be, be a part of it. And there it's, it's, an, it's a unique thing going on there. I, I personally believe. Yeah. They're really rooting for us. And the current casting directors, Chase and Tara are also just champions for actors in this market. And, um, you know, they see that we have talent that maybe some other markets don't know that we have, or in past years, they didn't realize Atlanta could bring it. I think they're figuring that out now, but, um, but Chase and Tara have been champions of that from the beginning. For sure. Yeah. Uh, listen, I'm, I'm in Chicago, so I, I know uh, kind of the same, same drill of we get chances for, uh, you know, co-star, maybe co-star. Oh. Uh, but you know, it's basically LA and New York that, that that gets in. So now, because of what happened, uh, you know, last year, the potential silver lining to the terrible, uh, you know, year is the fact that maybe Chicago actors are going to get more opportunities in the shows that are actually done here. So I know Atlanta is is uh, is a great uh, hub, uh, but do you see the same thing that you know New York and LA get uh, kind of the leads, and then we have to uh, you know pick up uh, where they're not? I do, but I think it's slowly changing as they're Good. starting to see that there's more talent here. Um, through my agency now, I do um, audition a lot more for like series regulars and, and, and nice. strong supporting and leads in films and stuff. So I do think that because of the cast and directors here, like you were saying, um, pushing the talent here and the agencies here that really believe in the actors here, we're mm -hmm. starting to see where uh, casting that's happening in LA and New York, they're also looking at. Atlanta as well, so we're really fortunate. Perfect. Yeah, I you know I have I have family in Alpharetta, so I always had on my resume that I'm a local hire to Atlanta. So you know, I I have auditioned for a few things in Atlanta. I haven't booked anything yet, but I'm looking forward to it. Let's put that. It's coming. Yeah, I hope so. soon then. Huh? We'll see you on set soon then. That's I right. hope so. I certainly <laughs> hope so. And uh, I you know, Aaron, you were talking about taping in a hotel. I was in Cincinnati, uh, you know, in a tennis tournament that uh, my friends and I, you know, go every year except for last year. Uh, and then I get uh, I get something for a Showtime uh, show. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, so my friend, we found that wall, and my friend <laughs> was on the phone. So and and we did that. I did not get a call back, but um, that was I, I remember the experience it. vividly. 
it's it's good to have those opportunities because it does make you realize like now I have this pop-up screen that's the color of my wall back here that I can take yeah. anywhere and you know I've I've amassed these tools that I now carry with me if I ever leave the town yeah. but um you know the other cool thing that the pandemic I think has brought about if it sounds weird to say that but mm -hmm. um is now self-taping isn't such a weird Atlanta thing, you know, yeah. nobody did that in LA and New York. And it was even to the point that early on, I was hearing some casting directors say that, you know, those of us in Atlanta really were the only people whose tapes looked decent when this all started to come back and they were accepting tapes from people in New York who just didn't have a setup. And, you know, who can blame them in a tiny apartment? You can barely find, you know, a, a blank wall probably. Um, yeah. But we really were able to come into that, I think, looking really sharp. Um, and now we can submit anywhere. So there's nothing stopping anyone from considering actors from other markets like yourself yep. going forward, I would think. Well, and it allows for the best fit, yeah. regardless of geography, to fill that, that role. And who wouldn't want to be able to be in their pajamas and be watching everyone's, you know, instead of sitting in a in a room watching, you know, hundreds of actors come through on a first, uh, the first yeah. time, you know, now maybe we get together for the callback or we do a Zoom callback. Um, you know, mm -hmm. I, I think there's, it's, it's bringing to life, it's a, you know, out of a bad circumstance, there yeah. have been so many positives that I kind of hope hang around um, you know, it's, it's fun to hop on the computer and chat with everybody, <laughs> you yeah. know. Although I'm still trying to get used to Zoom callbacks. I know. That, that still yeah. kind of freaks me out a little bit. So yeah, get a little more practice with that. Question, and that's, that's where I was going with this, right? Because, you know, I, I don't know about, uh, about you guys, but I, I love being in the room because I, I have a, I'm, a, I'm an empath, right? So for me, I want to see the eyes. I want to kind of be affected by, even if the reader is not getting much, there's still, it's a person. It's a life person, it's the energy. So I get I get a chance to play with that. Uh, here on Zoom, any type of these uh, auditions, uh, I, you know, my eyes naturally want to go down so I can see the eyes. I'm like, okay, and I want to block my eyes. I know I'm not looking at the camera because it's not a, you know, spokesperson spot. It's a little off but my eyes want to go down. So what, what have you found that works for you? Post-its. Huh? I, okay. I use little post-its or I'll use like anything that you can stick on the screen um, near the actual camera that you can get, you know, obviously I'm looking down the barrel here, but I'll put a post-it here and change my eye line so that it's not so drastically down the barrel. And that's just kind of like my focal point for a callback and obviously I would change up my framing and all the different little things you need to do, but there, there's all kinds of little tricks and tools. And I think uh, like Aaron was saying, um, Atlanta is a solid, like a solid, taking a lead, a solid lead in sort of things like Zoom callbacks and um, taping, self-taping, taping services, just kind of already knowing what we're looking for in the results. Like when we start, we, we go and we look at our tapes and we're like, oh, I need to change this or I need to change that or I'm going to change the background. It, it's less daunting and intimidating. And I think we, we all are now equipped with that eye to look at our self tapes and literally be like, oh, that's weird. I want to change this or change that. And so when we get into the Zoom callback, while they can be, and I agree with you, uh, Kwajalein, I, I agree they can be a little daunting and a little like, hey, where do I look? Um, but once we get into them, we can we at least see our frame and we see all the like pieces and parts and we start to be like, okay, let me just, you know, change things and move things and you confidence, you know, you just kind of hit it with some confidence. But yeah, there's, I mean, I feel like all of us could probably tell hour long stories of weird places we've taped and <laughs> awkward Zoom callbacks at this point. <laughs> yeah, man. Horror stories. Yeah. <laughs> Well, well, the other nice thing is that the casting directors get it. I mean, they have a little bit of a higher expectation now than they did maybe back in June, sure. but they're, they're cool with, you know, taking a minute at the top before they start the recording to make sure everybody's set. And, you know, sometimes people call, uh, chime in on phone 
and it's vertical and they'll give them a minute to turn it back again. And before they start, they're, you know, pretty forgiving, I think. So uh, at least we don't have to walk into the room and figure out what our framing is. You know, we know what our framing is. We can see it. That's uh, definitely some pros and cons to the yeah. Zoom versus the in-room, uh, depending, but yeah. yeah. And by the way, one of the things that, uh, you know, as, as I'm doing these shows, as I'm speaking to casting directors, uh, I, again, I don't know if you've seen this in your workshops and uh, talking to people, but there are certain casting directors that when they're doing workshops for actors, they're very specific. You walk in, the first question you ask is, you know, where's my frame? Uh, speaking to some other casting directors, I ask them, what is the one thing that bothers you that people should never ask? don't ask me what your frame is. I'm like, people, make up your mind. <laughs> you're, you're, just, you're, you're making our job even more complicated where we're trying to just uh, get in there and be in the character, not worry about all the other stuff. Sure. I think it's important as actors to do, I always call it doing my homework. And it's just kind of like, just knowing who your casting director is, uh, what they like, what they, what they prefer. Um, and when you do get your opportunity to go in person or in Zoom, like we're doing now, you just have that sort of understanding of either you ask that question or you don't ask that question. Um, but I will say again, other, other benefits to sort of, and I know it does sound weird saying it, Aaron, other benefits to the pandemic have been things like these online um, Zoom conversations with casting directors from all different markets that are giving us some real insight on what they truly are looking for, um, how they want us to approach certain things. And, and it's been very, very helpful and very enlightening and really, really worth it since we all have so much downtime. Um, even some of them are free, some can charge. I, I recommend every actor tuning into some of those things and just really getting an opportunity to hear from a casting director for once uh, what they want in a tape or what they want in a Zoom callback, what they want in an in the room. Um, and so that's another thing that's just been really interesting, uh, given the current climate of everything, just having access to a little bit more of their inner monologue, so to speak, of what they want from us. And that's been really, really helpful. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, that's really how the show started. This, this show was started in May, you know, end of May of last year. And the reason why I started it was I was taking workshops, like, uh, you know, Vas, Vas, you were saying. Uh, some in LA, some in New York, different casting directors from all over, and just writing down stuff, right? Then you get a chance to read in front of them, so there's your minute. Uh, but really, it's just to kind of have their brains pick. And then I uh, wanted to ask more questions, and there was not an opportunity to do so. And for every one of those things that I had to do, it was like 40 bucks here, 40 bucks here, 40 bucks here. I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to start my own program. I'll invite these people on so I can have conversations. That's how it all started, you know, 140 whatever uh, interviews ago. So um, absolutely, that's well. That's the, you know, being an actor, and we all know this. You rarely get any feedback yeah. um, unless you've booked something. There's your feedback. Yeah. Um, I mean, occasionally, you're, you know, if you're in the room, you're going to be redirected. Possibly, you know, hopefully, we all, that's a gift when someone wants to work with you. I think. Um, but so bringing up the workshops is an awesome tool and there isn't a blanket uh, casting want, right? Every casting director is going to want something different maybe, but all of that feedback you can just put away in a notebook and then, you know, go back through it and remind yourself of this is what so-and-so said to me. They'd love to see X, Y, and Z. I mean, it's what keeps us growing and getting better and smarter as actors. And um, it's, it's a valuable tool for sure. And uh, in terms of actors, right? So uh, again, you know, some people who are not familiar with the industry think that all actors uh, are on red carpets and driving Ferraris. We know that that's not the case. Uh, unless it's, I mean, unless I have a Ferrari, come on. Yeah. Uh, unless it's in the script, no we're happy to drive it, right? Um, so, I, I've seen, you know, as, as I was doing my background on you, I've seen that you have other things that you're doing, not just acting. By the way, you know, Vas, I wanted to ask you a question. Do you sing because everybody else in this uh, meeting does? Uh, so, you know, is that a part of your repertoire as well? Um, I don't, I'm not a professional singer. Uh, I do sing. 
I, I had done some rock lead sing lead vocals and blues. I play harmonica. So for a while, I mean, I do, but it's not like something I trained. I don't, I haven't trained that instrument necessarily, but I can and do. Sure. Well, and get get in touch with Aaron and uh, and the rest, and uh, see if you guys can you know, kind of rock out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but what what else uh, kind of do you do? And do you find that you know do you have kind of part time jobs or do you have full time jobs? It's well, can I just give you a quick little fun nugget? Hmm. I worked with Dustin Lewis, book a zillion years ago on stage in Illinois, he and I did state fair together. So when I was coming down to Atlanta, Dustin was such a resource to me. So it's so wild for people that were in that show with us or know the two of us to now see us on the same TV show together. It, it like epitomizes the small world that this industry is. Yeah. It's such a cool, we were singing and dancing on stage. Maybe we'll be singing and dancing on screen. One day, oh, who knows? Cobra Kai the musical. I, I yeah, that, that is getting pitched, yeah. <laughs> no, but my, uh, um, my husband and I actually own a, an eco-friendly pet company that we run together um, and with our rescue dog. So we are big into that and it allows us to travel and everything's uh, online sales. So um, I need a link to that. I want, I, I need that. <laughs> I will just send you stuff. Yeah, but well, just yeah, I'll buy from you because I'm all about the eco friendly stuff and I have fosters and pets of my own. So that's awesome. I didn't know you did that. Uh, Kara, please, uh, please get me a link and I'm going to make sure that it's below this video. So, everybody okay. Can... Oh, I'd love that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, by the way, rescue dog buddy, uh, you know, that's hey. a dude, you know, downstairs being very quiet. I'm very happy about that. There you go. Yeah. How about you, uh, Carla? Uh, for me, I do the typical actor thing. I kind of bounce around a little bit. I work jobs when I'm not busy on set. And then when I am busy, I kind of pull away and focus on the acting. So I'm kind of in and out yeah. uh, lately. When I first started um, really getting serious about acting, it would freak me out to leave jobs because it started a little later than other people have. So I was always used to having the you know stable nine to five. And so yeah. when I first jumped into the abyss i was screaming in my head the entire time and now it's just it's old hats regular no. Good. yeah uh erin I, I think i read something interesting about what you do oh well i'm a graphic designer by day when i'm not acting yeah. and um well and you touched on the music stuff which i really acting has replaced that lately because um it's i don't have time for everything that i really would like to do but um, but yeah, I was a professional musician for many years as well. Uh, Aaron, if you ever want to collaborate, or I guess, you know, everybody, uh, I, I'm a lyricist. So that's, that's a part oh. of oh, it. Cool. I just write, but I never got a chance to actually, you know, have any of it be anywhere. So if anybody wants uh, lyrics or collaborate, I'm, I'm here for you. Very cool. cool. <laughs> Uh, Aaron, I'm, I'm kind of in the in the similar industry. I'm in uh, IT and HR kind of, uh, you know, slash right now a project manager for a you know pharmaceutical company doing their IT uh, finance project. So that's that's what I'm doing, you know, before and after this. Yeah. Uh, Vas, how about you? I do. Uh, I mean, professionally, day to day, I'm a sommelier. I I do wine. Ooh, I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I have many tastings after this this afternoon. Uh, but uh, when I'm also not doing that, I, I am a stand-up comic as well. My wife and I both do stand-up comedy. Um, I'm entering my roughly my ninth or tenth year doing it. Um, she'll be in her like fifth or sixth year doing it. Awesome. But uh, before the pandemic, we were looking at 20, 2020 was going to be a big touring year for us. We were going to tour. Um, but luck, you know, that's that's not what obviously happened so we're here still auditioning and that's all great but uh yeah a lot of stand-up comedy and a lot of wine <laughs> yay you need a link to your services too <laughs> and then i want to pick your brain about how you study to do that because i've always wanted to do that oh i'm i'm happy to help anybody want to say like i was looking literally looking at starting it maybe like a youtube channel or an instagram just sure. my whole approach to wine is taking the um taking the sort of froofiness, the sort of pomp 
and circumstance out of it because that's the intimidation factor with wine. Everybody feels like they need to know so, so much about it. And you already know more than you think you do uh, just based on what you like. And all, all it takes is translating your matrix. Do you ever do like a virtual tastings with friends or clients? Cause um, I I'm kind of for that right now. <laughs> I do virtual tastings. Um, I definitely, I can, I work for a company called Sour Grapes um, in Atlanta. Uh, we're out of North Carolina, but we've got North Carolina, South Carolina, and Atlanta, uh, Georgia. Um, and I work with them on their social media. So I do virtual tastes with uh, different um, different distributors, different winemakers, things like that. And then I, I also will host, um, right now what's been really fun is just doing what I call just like a porch session. You can yeah. come by and uh, I have a bonfire and we can just hang out and I can teach you anything about the bottle that you would bring or a bottle that you'd like to have open. I have literally like almost 200 unopened bottles of wine oh and my, my cellar which is just a bookcase that i have full of wine in my house wow kara when you're when you're back in uh, in atlanta get some babysitting and uh, i think i'm know, ready you'll see the yeah. rest of it <laughs> my kids will babysit for yours when oh. you come in town i am taking you up on this okay <laughs> <laughs> we've reached that point you know i think i mean we're only at three months but we've reached that point where you're like, I will never let him out of my sight. And now I'm like, is, is there anyone that could take him? <laughs> Just even, I can't even believe my husband and I both scheduled calls at one o'clock. I'm on here with you guys. He's upstairs. And I think he just has the baby strapped on his chest while he's on his call, but we didn't coordinate it quite well. But so far it seems like it's all uh, it's all going okay. And Kara, as an, as an October baby, um, you know, my son that I referenced many times already, he's October 20th. I know you just uh, had October. What's what's your date? So his birthday is October 17th. This is crazy, though, because I'm Halloween. Okay. I'm October so, 30th. Wow. I love, I mean, anything around Halloween, it's just the absolute best. It's just such a fun time. You know, fall's gorgeous. Everybody's just being crazy and eating candy and I and I'm a horror fanatic, so I was born at exactly the right time. I love horror movies, so. Uh, okay. uh, I I had a chance, so I don't know, I, I'm, uh, you likely have watched it, the, uh, I keep calling Hubie Louie. It's the Adam Sandler uh, Halloween movie. Yeah. Um, so I I had a chance to talk to June Squibb uh, pretty, sh pretty soon after it. So uh, she still has the shirt. If you've watched it, they gave her those t-shirts. She wears it. It's awesome. Um, so in terms of, uh, you know, getting back to Cobra Kai before we wrap up, you know, being on a show that was, you know, global number one, it's still in the top 10 list. Uh, you know, as, as I was uh, loading things up for my son, I saw that it's not number one or two anymore, but it's still in the top 10 in the U.S. at least. So what kind of doors has it opened for you or has it? Well, the interesting thing about this is when we started on YouTube, mm -hmm. no one really knew <laughs> what, at least from, you know, people, our friends and family, it was like, Kara's doing this like YouTube thing. I don't, they just like couldn't wrap their brains around it being a real yeah. awesome show and being a real show. Um, and it's been such a cool thing. The transition to Netflix has now just the, the messages just from friends and of how they just binge through three seasons. And, you know, it's just been the coolest thing to even just to reconnect with people that you haven't heard from in so long because they're just loving something you've worked on. Um, it's just such a gift. I love it. I've had two of those instances that made my day. I had a girl that I had lost touch with um, probably around second grade who had posted something on Facebook trying to figure out if it was actually me, the same person that she knew. She knew because I had my, my maiden name as part of my whole name. So she's like, it's Aaron Bradley, but dang her, I don't know about that. And somehow it, her, um, her post made it to me. And I was like, it is me, I'm, you know, it was really cool. And then a good friend of mine from high school that I do keep in touch with, but not frequently enough, uh, reached out to say she and, and her um, roommates were watching the show and she was like, oh my gosh, you're, you were there. And those are the cool moments for me where someone's not expecting it and they're like, wait, I know her. And then they, they email you or text you and it's, it's really cool. 
May, maybe your that. high school can, you know, invite you to speak to some of their students. Uh, that, that would yeah. be pretty cool. We had a huge theater program that I, um, you know, made as much use of as I could possibly, you know. And um, so, yeah, I would enjoy that. I'm, I'm sure things are shut down with that, just like everything else right now. But yeah, hopefully in the future. Yeah. Uh, Kwajalein, how about you? Um, for me, it's meeting people from all over the world that absolutely loved Karate Kid and love Cobra Kai and just hearing their feedback about the show and um, loving all the characters. So it's been really, really cool connecting with people that I might not have met otherwise. So that's been a real highlight for me. Perfect. Vas? Um, yeah, it's uh, much of the same. Uh, it's very nice to, to have fans. Uh, that's definitely the first for me. I've, I've been in plenty of things, but this is the first time that I've had uh, easily like over 200 new followers on Instagram. I get different DMs from people just requesting headshots or things. And the, the coolest thing to me has been like the fan art or the fan made things. I have like a deck of playing cards that someone sent me with all the different characters on it. Yeah, um, yeah that was cool. So those were so cool. Um, there's, a, there's another one that's like an action card that a kid made. Um, just different stuff like that, that I think is really kind of beautiful. The, the world of Cobra Kai and the Karate Kid is much bigger than I ever could have expected it to be. And uh, I welcome that. I think it's so wonderful and so cool. And it's such an interesting and specific sort of world. There's like this older generation that loves the revisiting of, of that world and this new generation just getting into it and like having both both kinds of fans has been my favorite part of it is just seeing the like the, the guy I relate to because I was a fan of the Karate Kid and now this kid that just thinks that my character is hilarious and I'm just like wow this is awesome like super cool super super cool that's awesome and as we wrap up since you know the fans of Karate Kid are, are going to be watching it fans of Cobra Kai are going to be watching it what would be you know, one thing that you would want to pass on to them as they do that? And let's let's start with Kwajalein. Ooh, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you like, you know, um, the one thing I want to pass on is definitely my profound appreciation for everyone who has supported the show, who supports me, who supports the cast. Um, this would not be such a fun ride, it as fun of a ride without you guys. I mean, it's, it's tremendous anyway, but you guys just make it better. And um, thank you so much. Beautiful. Erin? Uh, uh, well said, I'm not sure I could top that. No, really, it is um, it is just appreciation um, for people loving the story, loving the characters, having such dedication to the whole franchise and the Miyagi-verse, as we call it. Um, I'm so honored to be a part of that with all, all of you. And um, yeah, just thank you to everyone who's a part of it and who connects with us and lets us know how important it is to them and hope we can continue to honor it. Yeah. Cara, um, Kara, I keep saying Cara, I apologize, Kara. Um, I, I, you know, thank you, thank you, thank you. I think, um, I hope the fans do know what a big component of this whole story they play in um, just supporting and continuing to uh, kind of be the wind beneath our wings. <laughs> um, but it really just the engagement and the love for the characters and the and the want for for more and more and more I think is is unique and and gives it so much strength. It, it's we have the best fans of, of anything out there. Thank you. And uh, Vas? Uh, again, to echo all those wonderful sentiments, absolutely. The Thank you a million times for being incredibly supportive and wonderful. Um, I will say this uh, in addition. I think this is one of those moments where uh, people oftentimes will look at reboots, remakes, and things of that nature and think they are gimmicky. And this is a moment where we can see that an, expand, an expansion on a story that we all love has really, has really found a home and a place in our sort of like Hollywood diaspora, right? Like this massive understanding of these incredible stories that we all grew up on. So I, I, I ask that anyone who thinks they have the rest of the story to their favorite movie or the prequel story to their favorite movie, write that 
script, man. Write that script, write that story, uh, get it out there, get it in front of incredible producers, directors, and writers like Josh John and and um, all those all the guys behind Cobra Kai uh, and everything else. Because that to me is one of the biggest gifts. We think these stories are over, and we we see them now in the new light, and it's like amazing. Like I want. I want Bloodsport, the TV show, to happen. Like, let's make it real. Um, <laughs> but that, that is what I, I would add to that, is just remember that these stories are out there and that lending your understanding of it can, can obviously become something really beautiful and cool and something we can all lend our art to. So that's something I will put out there as well. And to add to that, that, what did I see just the other day about someone who said it took 30 years um, to get from their original story idea to creating the show. Who has that? But I'm sure that's not a unique situation. So if you have an idea, don't give up on it. Give Stick up. with it. You just never know. Uh, Vas, if you haven't watched it yet, watch Warrior. Uh, it used to be on Cinemax. Now it's on, uh, on HBO uh, Max. So uh, you know, basically that blood sport, which again, I, I love, but Bloodsport, in a way, is based on you know Bruce Lee and what he did in his uh, movies. And Warrior was written by Bruce Lee, so it's based on a story that Bruce wrote and that Shannon, and his daughter, took, and they created a show. It's it's an amazing, amazing. Yeah, I've been saving. That. I know you can't see it, but I'm a big Bruce Lee fan. Uh, been saving that that to watch it, so I'm definitely going to. You should. It's another one, and um, again. I'm, I'm lucky and grateful that I get a chance to talk to people that I get to watch on screen. So it's kind of that, you know, three, three things that blow my mind all come together, right? As a viewer, as an actor, as, a, you know, as a martial artist. Uh, but Warrior and the cast and the way that they created that show, there is the real family there. And I'm seeing the same thing with Cobra Kai. There are other parallels of, you know, Cobra Kai was on YouTube uh, Red and not many people knew about it until they got on, uh, age, uh, excuse me, uh, Netflix. Same thing with uh, Warrior. They were on Cinemax. And then with all the shakeups, it's a much smaller audience. Many people didn't know about it. And now it's finally an HBO Max. So I'm hoping as a Warrior fan that it gets that wider audience that Cobra Kai got to enjoy. So, you know, another amazing show in case you're interested in, uh, in that. So thank you all for coming on. Uh, as a fan of, of uh, Cobra Kai, I really uh, loved watching there. I hope, I know, you know, you got to prove for a season four. I hope it continues on for another, you know, 10 seasons after that. And you're a part of that story. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. And thanks to everybody for tuning in to another episode of The Love of Acting. You know how much we love it. And this is why we keep doing this. Thank you.